What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to DevSouls. For this tech news segment, we're going to be diving into ChatGPT 4.0. ChatGPT 4.0 just released, and there's a lot of things that come with that, and there's some things that are going to be affecting the industry of programming that we're going to dive into. So without further ado, let's get started. So ChatGPT 4.0 just released, and there's a lot of new things that are coming out, and we're going to specifically focus on Sky. Now, Sky is their voice prompt AI assistant software that they've created. It runs similar to like... Cortana off of Halo. So besides the fact that Scarlett Johansson is really pissed off that they used her voice uh, in the actual uh, Sky Chat GPT 4.0 voice, um, there's some pretty interesting stuff going on here, which it does sound like Scarlett Johansson. I don't know if you guys have played around with it or heard it or anything along those lines, but it sounds exactly like her. And we may be on the brink of, I don't know if you guys have ever watched that movie, Her?, but uh, we may be on the brink of people falling in love with Siri-like voices. Now, this is great news because us programmers can have girlfriends now. <laughs> this is a big deal. This is a big deal. There's hope for all of us. So we're announcing ChatGPT for a new flagship model that can reason across audio, vision, and text in real time. Now, we're going to play their demo for just a little bit. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling? This guy looks way too happy to be talking to her right now. I'm not gonna lie. Think about, are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? From what I can see, it looks like- Now I just can't help but think of all the evil things he did after making this promo video. But anyway, let's dive into some of the model capabilities. We have a bunch of different videos out here where it just pretty much shows how this sky is supposed to be a lifelike companion to help you, you know, complete daily tasks anything along those lines. So we have a couple demos of it playing like rock, paper, scissors, sarcasm, doing math, harmonizing, point and learn Spanish, uh, meeting AI. It's just, it, there's a lot of different features that come with this companion. But what I really want to get into is this live demo of ChatGPT 4.0 as a coding assistant, because this is kind of what this whole entire video is going to be around, is the fact that as programmers, we need to be more leaning more in towards the AI realm. That way we can use it to help accomplish our daily tasks, our coding tasks, and things along those lines. So let's take a look at this, this demo video. Computer for this. Okay. So I'm gonna open the ChatGPT desktop app like Mira was talking about before. Okay, and to give a bit of background on what's going on, so here we have um, a computer and on the screen we have some code and then the ChatGPT voice app is on the right. So ChatGPT will be able to hear me, but it can't see anything on the screen. So I'm going to highlight the code, command C it, and then that will send it to ChatGPT. And then I'm going to talk about the code to ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there. How's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a coding problem today. Of course. I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? OK, I'm going to share with you some code. One second. To be honest, this is just downright terrifying. Sure thing. Take your time. OK, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. Awesome, thanks so much. And in the code, there's this function foo. Can you describe to me what the plot foo x y takes in a so it's basically describing what the code a data does, frame x containing temperature data and average a which fluctuate. And so I'm gonna uh, generate the plot and then show it to you. Give me one second. Absolutely. Take your time. I'm excited to see the plot when you're ready. Yeah. So, so far, ChatGPT has only been able to see the code, and now I'm going to run it, and then I'll use the vision capabilities of the ChatGPT desktop app so it can actually see everything going on on the screen as well. Okay, ChatGPT, I'm sharing with you the plot now. I'm wondering if you can give me a really brief one-sentence overview of what you see. 
plot displays smoothed average, minimum, and maximum temperatures throughout 2018, with a notable annotation marking a big rainfall event in late September. Fantastic. I have another question for you. Um, which months do you see the hottest temperatures, and roughly what temperatures do those correspond to? The hottest temperatures occur around July and August. The maximum temperature during these months is roughly between 25 degrees and 30 degrees, 77 degrees Fahrenheit to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. What's going on with the white axis? Is this... Temperatures are labeled accordingly. Linear... Uh, yeah. So as we can see, you know, not only can ChatGPT help me solve very easy linear um, algebra equations that I need help with, it can also interact with, you know, code bases and see the outputs of plots and everything like this going on on a computer. So that is basically terrifying, number one. But number two, it's going to be so beneficial just to have an assistant there with you, helping you with your code and solving problems and things along those lines without having to actually switch back and forth between ChatGPT, copying and pasting code, and getting you know mixed jumbled data. You can easily just share your screen and show what's going on with your code. That's super exciting. But the problem is a lot of people still with AI and programming, they're trying to push it away saying, no, we don't need to be using AI. Programmers need to stick with programming. Leave AI can't help things along those lines. And we really need to steer away from that mentality because AI is only going up and AI is only getting more and more popular. And when we see things like ChatGPT 4.0 and Sky and all of these use cases that can be super beneficial to programmers, it just goes to show all the more reason why we should it's definitely be leaning more into AI. For example, I saw a video earlier of someone who actually sh took a picture of a breakout game, put it into the ChatGPT 4.0 code prompt, and asked it to recreate the game in Python, and it was able to make it, run it, and play it smoothly. And so this just goes to show AI is only going to get more advanced. Things like this are only going to get higher. ChatGPT 4.0 is not the cap of what we're going to be able to do, especially with AGI, which is artificial general intelligence, coming closer to reality. And so these are just all things to keep in mind as you're going out and learning how to code. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. Hope you like this video. Please hit that subscribe button, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next one. We're going to be doing more tech news, more... We're going to be doing more tech news segments covering new topics and new things that are going on in the industry, and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Peace.